Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing Toy Dino. And Toy Dino's ability is I have high attack. And that's all you really need to know anyways. Uh, we got a pretty strong level to, uh, level 2.0 here. We get to buy two characters because we found two demons deals, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we picked up a goose to start. I mean, it's just going to scale throughout the game. And uh, we're, if we're just going to be able to hold on to that for a long time and cash it in later. Uh, especially since it's almost a free character. Um, we basically don't have, we don't, we don't, it's kind of just extra tempo, so we don't really have to, uh, have to get rid of it in a hurry or anything to improve our board. Because, uh, again, just an extra character, which is, uh, which is fantastic. And then we're going to pick up a second one here with a second Elaine. We also have a, have a sword here to make one of our Elaines just a little bit better. And yeah, we don't really have to, again, again with the goose i think goose is actually really good on toy dino especially because you don't really have to worry too much about tempo early just because uh because you have high attack and uh usually you're able to uh to draw most boards just with your hero attack um considering the uh the elaine triple here but uh but the future vision um is just a little bit too tempting and i did take a free roll after the future vision this was played on stream um, so uh, I think I maybe I was a little bit distracted there and yeah, I wasn't I was running out of time and, uh, and Usually, you know, you, know, you want to use the free roll. So I guess it was just uh, I Just uh, my instinct kind of took over and I uh, and I took the free roll so so we're down one roll Unfortunately with our uh, which are with our future vision. Uh, I did remember that we had it uh, the next turn though So we're not gonna burn this one at least uh, we're gonna pick up a uh, muddy ocean crab i've said before i mean you just you kind of just want to pick these up when you see them on level four especially if you don't have a a game plan already which sometimes you do on four but uh but yeah it's just a good tempo unit and also um it just starts uh starts building up your dark twigs on six which uh which i found that the stealth comp has been really really prevalent in uh in my lobbies and uh honestly a pretty easy uh pretty easy route to uh to a high finish if you can uh, if you can get a dark twig uh early even if you don't have too many stealth characters throughout the game um i found that uh that the fact that the twig scales itself uh fight after fight um it just makes it uh makes it pretty formidable as if you can just survive uh for a little bit with it i mean if you have ways to give other th other things stealth as well like mad oblivion is like a really really good uh a really good activator for stealth, a really good uh, early uh, early pickup, or I guess not early, but level 5 pickup, you want to pick up a couple Mad Oblivions. They've gone up way, way in value with uh, with the introduction of Dark Twig. We are going to take some damage here, unfortunately. Our, our high attack isn't quite enough there. Um, we did pick up a couple scam units here. We got a couple BLTs. BLTs really much better the, uh, late and uh, than they are early, as you can see. Not really doing a ton for us. Um, I mean, the fact that uh, that they have three power and they, uh, they they aren't killing the things that they're attacking into, I think, uh, is working to our detriment just uh, just slightly here. But I mean, we're just trying to we're just trying to do the best we can with the shops that we're given here. Since we can't take rolls, we took that future vision, so we kind of uh, kind of lost that option for ourselves. We're gonna pick up a Sir Galahad, recently buffed to uh, to add a little bit extra stats um, to his left and right. Also has unyielding, which is a, a real keyword. And uh, once again, unfortunately, our high attack not quite enough to uh, to save us from uh, from a loss there. Again, if we were able to take out that unit with the uh, with the brave little tailor and didn't leave a body behind, our high attack would have been enough to get us a tie. So, really, really unfortunate there. We do get another muddy ocean crab here, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I was saying uh, Galahad recently buffed still doesn't feel very good. It just doesn't really synergize well with a lot of stuff. Um, the positioning gets awkward because it buffs its left and uh, to the left and right like it can work with Romeo and Juliet a little bit And I mean like certain units that want to uh, to have extra stats uh, Like it seems like it might be fine like this uh, radiant fairy um, I think we are gonna take the radiant fairy here. We're just fill out, figuring out what to sell We had some some pairs and I didn't want to sell Rapunzel's Prince just because I mean it is offering it is giving us some amount of stats on the board with the support uh, bonus there all right, we fare much better against this board. They get the tie, but uh, but at least we're not taking damage. And now we are on six, which is nice. And we're there's a cat cabinet here, recently nerfed. Um, so it's only gonna spawn one catnip in a bottle, but even that, the catnip in a bottle also spawning the funny cat, that's still three bodies in one. Uh, still, uh, still definitely worth it. Honestly, with this cat cabinet, it's possible that we should have just taken the cat queen here, but I decided not to. I think I, think I ended up taking the... Uh, the Nero 
Um, I mean, it's just Nero is a pretty decent chunk of stats just by itself, and it's also ranged. Um, there's also a herding dog in this shop, which I think was the deciding factor. But again, with this cat queen, I think uh, I think it was probably correct to. Uh, uh, also, we're cashing in our gooses now. They've uh, they've uh, swelled to uh, to be worth a, a couple of dollars at this point, which is uh, which is perfect with our future vision plan there. Um, just allows us to buy a bunch of uh, buy buy an extra six there on uh, on level six. And we are going to play the cat cabinet, of course. Uh, the the funny cat doesn't give us any stats, but um, or this turn at least. But uh, but starting next turn it will. And th that extra those extra two cat summons um, will be enough for those tailors to uh, to be able to actually kill what they attack into. We're still, I mean, we're still very open to uh, to changing game plans here. Like we've got we've got kind of just like a couple pieces from a uh, couple different comps. Like we've got some scam pieces. We have a cat piece. We've got uh, two dogs and a couple stealth pieces. So uh, so yeah, we can we can still kind of go any direction. Consider just taking the Uther, but that's kind of going into a third, <laughs> a sort of third direction or fourth direction or whatever. Uh, we're gonna triple the up muddy ocean crab. Uh, scroll. I like scrolls a fair amount, and catalyst is fine uh, for s some extra stats. It's much better earlier, and if you have a mana treasure, pirate map with as your first treasure is a little bit awkward, but I think the upside is high enough, and uh, and I feel like uh, we got to six quick enough, and uh, and and hit some pieces that uh, that were strong enough to survive long enough to uh, to get this pirate map value. We did pick up a corgi there at the end as well, and takes the Nero stats really well, as well as the herding dog. Get herself another tie here, which is uh, definitely just fine, as long as we're not taking damage. There's a Shadow Lord there, but uh, but we are just going to ignore it. Um, with only the Muddy Ocean Crab, like we don't necessarily want to... Uh, we don't want to take some Shadow units that don't really do a lot until we get the Twig. If we saw the Twig, we, we might have jammed it, um, but, uh, but as it stands uh, in this particular spot, I don't think we want to uh, to just start uh, start building pieces towards the stealth comp, rather than uh, rather than take pieces that are going to be uh, very or are going to be contribute to the comps that we're already uh, already kind of deeper into, which is dogs, which was dogs uh, until we uh, we found this arch demon and Frank, um, which I kind of had to gloss over there, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we picked up a, we had a, saw a Frank and an arch demon in, in the same shop, so. Um, we've got a few, uh, again, a couple scam pieces. Nero's an evil character, so it seemed like a, seemed like a pretty good fit for us to just jam the uh, the Frank. I know Frank is not nearly as good as he was without summoning uh, Frankenstein's monster, which is a baffling change to me. Um, Frank does get quite a bit worse, especially in like the like the hybrid sort of demons comp. Like you want to get the bodies to uh, to to get the most out of Frank's summons. And there's that dark twig, which I was uh, tempted tempted to pick up here as well. Um, for actually, for the first few games, I thought dark twig was evil, but uh, but it is actually a neutral character, so it doesn't quite fit on the uh, on the Frank board, uh, supernaturally, anyways. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, the demons like they they do offer bodies for you to get the most out of your Frank summons, but uh, but yeah, those uh, those those evil stats don't necessarily uh, don't necessarily help you anymore. So I think you wanna. You want to lean more into just like uh, like the scam version of Frank, like and just uh, maybe just try and bury it with uh, with wolves. I mean, you're already trying to do that anyways, I think. Um, but yeah, like that was kind of the natural natural build uh, for me, anyways. Was uh, I would build uh, build demons into Frank, but uh, I don't really play too many too much Frank uh, Frank these days again because of the nerf, but. But I think it still can be uh, be mostly effective. We're gonna pick up a high demon here. Like we might, we might just be playing demons with uh, with a, with the sort of Frank uh, supplement. It gets a little bit awkward because we have to play like our, our our high demon in the front on the front line if we want to play Frank. But uh, I think the upside is at least slightly worth it here. We're gonna take the BLT triple. Normally you don't care too much about tripling BLT, but uh, with uh, with pirate map we definitely want to take it. And there is another arch demon, so I think we're gonna lock for that. Oh, we do have a mana left, so we can sell for it. We do sell for it, and we just jam Nero on the board as another evil character. Unfortunately, our Frank does get scammed here immediately. But it looks, yeah, it looks like the opponent is also playing uh, playing a Frank comp here. But uh, but I think our demon uh, our demon supplement is. Uh, is bigger than the rest of their support, their, their supporting uh, cast for their Frank. 
We get to triple our arch demon, so we get a level six treasure. And none of these are are incredibly uh, exciting. Like the silver dagger gives you extra hero attack, so like it's survivability, which is a weird for a level six treasure. Bottled lightning, I feel like, is just such an underwhelming level six treasure. Um, but it is a, it is an option. We are summoning multiple things, but instead we're just gonna take the drum roll. I mean. It works really well with Nero, of course. I mean, well, not not this Nero, because Nero's never getting into the back line. But uh, um, in general, it works well, well with Nero if we see like a, a great dog comp, and we can uh, we end up uh, audibling into uh, into dogs. Um, but mostly, we're we're just gonna use this uh, drum roll for uh, for mirror mirror on the walls, which uh, which is the only way to get stats out out of um, out of Frank now with the uh, monster being gone. So, uh, so that's kind of our that's kind of our plan. That was kind of the logic behind taking the drum roll there. Um, I mean, the rest of the treasure just seemed really underwhelming. Like we we are we do like summoning summoning uh, the demon harbingers into slot one with the bottled lightning was an option, but like it just it just didn't feel like it was going to be good enough. Whereas if we can get um, like an upgraded mirror with a double a double entrance and uh, and land it in the right spot, like it can be really really massive. I think we're gonna take this try my net here. Just fills out the front line really well. Also, especially with the uh, arch demon summons, try net I think it's a lot better because of course uh, anything that gets attacked into in slots one through three is gonna be replaced by uh, a demon token. So it's just gonna take longer than uh, average to get to your slot four attack. So just more chances for them to attack into your try my net. And we're gonna lock this other Frank. Um, it, or when we when we scouted their board, their biggest character was in slot one there, but I still put the uh, put the BLT in slot one and the uh, the mirror in slot two, just because like the uh, um, BLT just gets so much worse with the Arch Demon summons. Uh, we do take a pretty big hit there. We lose to that boost comp with uh, King Arthur's. Unfortunately, we didn't scam the right Arthur. Um, but yeah, so. For the same reason that try my net is good, um, it's the re same reason that uh, BLT is really bad in slot two or three, because it's just going to take so much longer to actually get to that attack. Um, there is a succubus, which I, I am a big fan of. It's a it's a little bit awkward again with with these demons. Like you you want to play your your arch demon and your your high high demon in in the back line with Frank, so um, so scam pieces in two or three just again gets so much worse. Um, I ended up, uh, yeah, just placing the second high demon there in the in the front row and the uh, second Frank in the back row. And also, this this hides our uh, our mirror on the wall. So when they when they scout our board next turn, they're not going to see the uh, the mirror on the wall. So we're going to actually have an easier time uh, positioning our mirror correctly, and they're not going to be able to play around it. They did have a lot of big numbers there, but we did manage to uh, to scam them down and get a tie. We got our level seven treasure finally from our pirate map. Our long, uh, long-awaited investment. We have a choice between Golden Mimic and uh, the Shield. I mean, the Celestial Shield is, uh, is a, I think, a no-brainer there. The Mimic for the uh, anticipating drum roll just for our, our Golden Mirror now is kind of funny, but, uh, but no, we took the better treasure here. All, the, all our summons are going to get, uh, are going to get shields as well, and all the summons that come out of Frank and fill up the front row are also going to get shields. So this is going to be extremely effective. Like maybe one of the most effective comps for Celestial Shield here. And also, there was the the battle song aura or whatever it's called, the level seven treasure that gives you your, all your characters plus fourteen plus seven, which is to me completely completely baffling that that is even a level seven treasure on the level of like celestial shield or uh, or golden mimic there. So I think uh, I mean if I think that that maybe uh, maybe needs to change. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you saw how just how how giant our uh, our mirror got there. We did manage to uh, to put it across from uh, from a pretty big King Arthur, and uh, with the double entrance. And I mean, of course, we get two hundred percent of their stats because it's golden mirror. And then the double entrance just made it. I think it was close. It was like 800, 800 or something, and it was just able to uh, to kind of kind of tank their whole board there. And there is another Frank. Uh, we did get another Frank triple here. Or we did get a Frank triple here, and uh, we took a took an um, what do you call it? Some stats for the front line. Not exactly the greatest here, but uh, I mean it's better than nothing. Um, and yeah, you can see. I mean the shield, the shields are so so good against uh, their sort of semi stars, semi support comp here. 
and uh yeah even even without frank's monster we still uh we still managed to to weather the storm and uh and scam that opponent out um but yeah that's uh so that's kind of i mean i don't know how how much of a a, a role it played but uh like the anticipating drum roll with the mirror in the wall is a thing that you can do um if you can get like a like an entrance rune as well on the uh, on the mirror mirror you can do some pretty funny things with uh with just that one unit um you do have to kind of play like a, a shell game you, you have to uh you have to kind of outsmart your opponent or anticipate your opponent to uh to really get it done but uh but yeah so i mean frank frank is much worse like the takeaway from this game is frank is much worse but can still win i mean it's scam 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 is still fine i wonder if people maybe people were just complaining about scam and that's why frank got nerfed um but yeah frankenstein's monster even with this light buff that it got is i feel like completely unplayable by itself if it's not coming out of frankenstein then, or dr frankenstein then like i i don't want it um anyways uh i hope you enjoyed this please leave a like comment subscribe um do all those fun things that i'm supposed to tell you to do i hope you have a great rest of your day i apologize for the lateness of this upload um but i will see you tomorrow <laughs>